Playing paper and dice games like Iron Sworn or Dungeons and Dragons solo comes with a set of advantages that subtract a lot of the vagaries of group play from the equation, such as no-shows, disagreements in the group between players, and provided the dice are friendly towards you, perhaps a bit more control of the narrative. However, it also comes with a certain amount of drawbacks, and one of the key ones is that while playing in your own head, you can develop a tendency to get in your own head and overthink and want to over control things. In addition, if you're anything like me and you have been playing solo for a while, you also might have a tendency to accumulate a rather substantial set of books, of random tables, of collectible items more, well, more honestly put really, because when do we ever get to put all of them to use? Well, when we find ourselves in the overthinking phase and we need a palate cleanser, maybe the best thing we can do is to put them to use, and instead of over-preparing, we'll launch into the middle of the action. Let the dice take charge and let the tables tell the story. Hello friends, Anderson here. As you may have gleaned from the intro and from this mess of books around me, I am embarking on a journey of randomness, of zero preparation, of solo play that is a bit of a relinquishing the reins and discovering things as we go through them without any idea of what world we start in. Are we in a city? Are we in a rural area? Who are we even? All of this we will leave to the dice. Our engine for this journey into the unknown will be one that will not get in the way. It will be very lean, very functional. It will be Nave, the game by Ben Milton, the proprietor of the Questing Beast YouTube channel and accomplished RPG author of Maze Rats and Nave, among others. And there is already a first question answered. We will be playing a Nave, which means there will be no classes. There will be no decisions to make, whether we're a thief a mage or a fighter, we shall simply be determined by what equipment we have and that will decide our role in this world that we are yet to discover. Now I'm calling this a lonely knave for the simple reason that we will be playing one single character and there is also a solo supplement that adds a little bit of solo ability to knave which already has very good solo ability to begin with but a lonely knave supplements us with such things as a closed questions oracle set of random determinators for open questions things like that and for the rest we have a vast array of books of random tables literally the books of random tables but also the ultimate toolbox we have a sword and sorceries monstrosities compilation of foes we have forbidden lands to draw from in case we want to add a hex crawling element into our game we have the tomo adventure design in case we want to shed some more detail on our quests but we also have some books of random quests do we need all those to get started not really we would need a game system a couple of dice and gm emulator and maybe a couple of random tables and then we would be set to go but again as mentioned in the intro if you play solo for any length of time there is a tendency to accumulate a lot of stuff and i would just like to trot out a bunch of that stuff and make use of it as we cycle through this very randomly generated story of ours and see how far it takes us. In the past, I've always done some kind of a character creation video and illumination of the systems that are being used to create the character. In this case, I would lean a bit more towards prep is play so we can meet this character while we are already setting the scene, while we are already understanding maybe a little bit of something about the situation this character finds themselves in. So, let's get to it, shall we? Although if I may invite you to like this video and comment on it, that would be greatly appreciated. Thank you. Now, as surely as life is like an arena, as surely as a dagger's fall can be the opening 
to a war of epic proportions. The winds of tomorrow blow the scent of oblivion towards us. As surely as all of those Elder Scrolls references baked into a single nonsensical sentence, a knave's journey more often than not begins in a prison cell. And that is where we find our yet undefined central narrative figure. Hunched over in a dimly lit prison cell with perhaps a sliver of daylight, early morning light falling in, illuminating the ubiquitous rusty metal bars, the slightly damp floor, the moldy walls and the shadowy silhouette sitting, waiting. It's a bit too early to ask any oracle questions. We don't really need to know yet why we're here, whether we are in a wilderness tower captured by some vile cult in the depth of a dungeon held by the local authorities or any other scenario you can think of. What we'd like to know first is who is it we're dealing with here? So as our knave raises their head and that sliver of daylight casts away the shadows, revealing some first features of their face, we find out what that face looks like. 15. Sunken. The sallow features of a deprived creature come into the fresh relief of the morning light. And that perhaps gives us an idea that we've been here a while. We have suffered this imprisonment for longer than just a couple of days. The seven on the skin table tells us pale, confirming that we have not seen much of this elusive sunlight that for the moment sheds a thin beam on the sitting figure, but will before long disappear again, leaving behind just twilight and almost total darkness. And as the figure stretches and gets up, we perhaps see a little bit more about their build, their physique. One, it's an athletic figure with a build indicating that physical activity is something that this person has in their daily routine. So as they get up and shake their limbs to get a bit of blood flow going, we take a second closer look and we find 12. We find that they irritably brush this long, dirty, matted hair out of their face and try and at least groom it just a tiny bit. By the way, I have been filling some of these results on the character sheet here. Uh, there is a character sheet for Knave as well that comes when you purchase the printed version. It is uh, not the most camera friendly because it is rather small and hard to read, but it's quite um, nice to have. Now, let's ask our first oracle closed question regarding whether this imprisoner of ours has left us our own clothing or whether we are merely wearing prisoners rags. I would consider this a closed question, so I'm rolling a die 20 on this closed questions oracle here and see what outcome we get. Well, we're off to an interesting start. We get a 20, which is the potentially best possible result. So we get a yes. And I feel like this could be interpreted as we have been given our clothing back. And the and is because we are about to be released. That could be the scenario here. We have served our time or we have more likely just awaited our trial and our sentencing. The sentence is about to be handed down or executed, we don't know. And in preparation for that, we have been allowed to wear our own clothes again. 11, they are foreign clothes. So we are a foreigner in this land. That makes it all the more likely that we are imprisoned, considering we are likely to be blamed for anything happening in this area, town or whatever we find ourselves in. I'm now assuming 
considering there is uh, an assumption that there has been some kind of trial or sentencing or will be and that is the whole relationship with the clothing that we are in fact in some kind of official governmental dungeon and not imprisoned by some cult or the next door bandit gang or something or maybe we are we are imprisoned and we are about to be ransomed let's ask the oracle here another yes no question we're asking are we imprisoned by the government and since i actually consider this a likely proposition i'm going to roll this with a advantage on this roll which means i roll two dice and pick the highest the highest is a 14 yes but so we are imprisoned by the government but we're a foreigner and we are about to be handed back to our own government i think that's what's happening here so Yes, we are imprisoned by the local government. We are about to be released, but we are about to be released into some envoy of our own culture, of our own people, and our trials and tribulations aren't quite over. Now, in light of that, let us maybe find out something about the background of this knave and seeing how we are about to be taken out of our cell getting ready, dressing ourselves in our foreigner's garb. Muffled voices ring out to the corridor that leads through this dungeon, through this holding area. And among this muffled conversation, a guard's voice is heard and an answer is given by this foreign envoy as the guard simply asks. So what's so special about this one? And that is a 15 on the background roll because I wanted to figure out why are we possibly imprisoned and we find out that we are an outlaw. And again, the dice are very generous in weaving elements together that actually make a lot of sense when combined with each other. Nothing special, merely an outlaw. That cold voice of the envoy speaking in the same accent that our character speaks but perhaps with different speech idiosyncrasies. So let's find out how our character speaks. Nine, oh God, nine gravelly. Oh my God. How am I gonna, okay. Uh, give me a moment while I gargle some nails and presumably our character's reaction here is merely to emit a soft <laughs> in light of this indictment from down the corridor. An outlaw, eh? Huh. Calling me surprised. Must have put on quite the show for you to come all this way. And perhaps our misfortune can tell us what show we put on to warrant the attention of our own people to bring us back. Ten exiled. Huh. Okay, this is a spanner in the works at least a little bit from my understanding now that we are actually being brought back home maybe that's because we don't want to go we were exiled and we are fine with that because we don't want to go back there but now something happened back home that makes them want to get us back maybe we are inheriting something that we don't want like some title or some rank or something that would be nice like uh i could work with that yeah, I think that that could be something where we're like the, the heir of something, but we have transgressed in some way. We have done something that made us an outlaw. Therefore, we weren't executed. We were exiled because of our perhaps original social standing. And now the law of succession tells that we have to come back because while we are exiled, we are maybe now politically opportune because whoever else stands to inherit what we stand to inherit is even more of a pain in the ass than we would be if brought back. Except we don't want to go. <laughs> And that's why they had to have us captured here, so they could pick us up and try and drag us back home. A show composed of many things not befitting one's station. But eventually the blood will out, and here we are. 
That leaves us to fill in some navigational points for us that we need to know that we cannot maybe easily discover narratively without already preempting a few things. So the virtue and vice, I will simply roll and then they'll steer us in how to play this character. That's a 16 for the virtue, which is merciful. Interesting. That will be a somewhat multifaceted character. Maybe the mercy was provided to the wrong kind of person and that made us an outlaw. Maybe we defied a direct order from royalty and didn't wipe out that village or whatever else we were tasked to do and instead, um, well, deserted maybe. That could work or we'll, we'll figure it out probably eventually through the narrative. What is our vice? <laughs> 15, we are rude. Oh no. So gravelly voiced, merciful yet rude, exiled, former noble, still probably current noble because the blood will out, but they've just had enough with this nonsense. So direct mode of speech on the far side of inappropriate. Let's see what tools we have to find a name and maybe that also answers the question whether we are dealing with a he or a she. I think I'm just gonna roll on this uh, name table mentor NPCs that is a collection from the old scale NPC generator because it's a nice D100 and it's a mixture of male and female so We'll probably find something. Rolling up a percentage dice. 88 Torga, Orkish or Tribal Mythos, female. Okay, hmm. <laughs> oh god, how? <laughs> Torga. So it's a level one. And then that also makes us, I would say, combined with the gravelly voice that makes us an orc. <laughs> so we have an orc female speaking with a gravelly voice who is merciful but also rude. Hmm. Lastly, let's see what alignment we are honed in up to this point. That doesn't mean it can't necessarily change, but with the mercifulness, that's at least a door opener to, um, well, some different things. But it's also uh, less of a orientation of good and evil and more of lawfulness, neutrality or just pure chaos. So let's roll that as well. That's an 18, which means we are an agent of chaos. Rather, we don't like laws or constraints or rules. So that's how we roll. So I'm assuming we have some kind of an escape option baked in here and for that we also need our starting gear determined. I'm thinking that probably this will be handed over in some kind of a traveling chest to the envoy. It won't be given directly to us, but if we can, I don't know, uh, free ourselves and get a hold of it, we will know sort of what kind of a type archetype we are. So are we like a armored fighter or are we more of a thieving kind? We'll have to work that out. So our starting armor is 17, a brigandine. Okay, so we already have a pretty decent armor. Puts us at armor defense 13. It's also worth quite a bit, which is nice. Um, helmets and shields, anything? No, no helmet, no shield, okay. We do get a weapon of our choice, but the choice I think also depends a bit on our physical abilities and constitution because that determines the amount of items we can carry. There is something like item slots in this game to simplify equipment management. So all your armor weaponry consumes item slots and those item slots are determined by your constitution score. So what we're going to do now is we're going to roll our scores. And I don't actually have enough shiny six sided dice here because we need three of them and we will pick the lowest and that will be our attribute score, attribute bonus rather. So here we go for the first score. The first score is a four for the strength. That is actually pretty good. We can swap the scores of two abilities. So in case we end up with something we really don't like, let's go for dexterity. 
Ooh, okay, five. Intelligence. That's a three. Wisdom. That is a one. And charisma. That is... <laughs> okay. Um, am I? Hmm. <laughs> That's a six. Uh, wow, okay. Hmm. Uh, I mean, uh, am I just gonna leave it like this and rely on our charisma to get us... Is it? Is it... Are we getting away with being frank and outright rude because we're so incredibly compelling? <laughs> okay, this role is it kind of threw me off a little bit. I did not expect to uh, knock that one out of the dice tray. Mm. Do I want to swap anything though? I mean, it would also be a thing to move that six to somewhere else. and um, But I kind of like it there because it's like, it makes us sort of a reluctant leader figure potentially and that may be also why they want us back and why we even got away with our crimes <laughs> i think i'm keeping it this way um we we have constitution five which means we have five uh, item slots and let's see what all takes up slots because we have already two slots taken up by our brigandine we could accommodate uh longsword battle axe kind of thing we're strong enough and also have the available capacity and we don't have a shield so we're wielding a two-hander like i'm assuming for the purpose of this that the only things that take up slots are the ones that are called out of taking up slots so we can actually afford a hefty weapon i think we'll do a battle axe nice and orky and we also get a bit of dungeoneering gear and general gear so let us roll for the Dungeoneering gear, which we have two of. We have five spikes and lamp oil. And our general gear is, we just roll ones on each of these. So first one is grease. And the second one is a horn. Okay, none of which is currently at our disposal. We just have the clothes on our back that we're currently putting on and everything else is locked away. Let's determine our hit points. That's done with one D8. And since I don't want to die immediately, I'll take a five in case we roll under five. We roll an eight. Okay. This character is, uh, I'm, I'm dreading the first actual die roll checks because we're blowing all of our good luck um, <laughs> on the character creation already. Um, wait, that's hit dice. That's not hit points. So we have one hit a die and we have eight maximum hit points charisma is actually also used for intimidation so actually we are just probably very very intimidating hmm so there we are about to be taken out of our cell by the envoy who wants to bring us back to our orcish homeland where we don't really want to go and how all of that plays out we will find out next time. So thank you very much for watching. I'll catch you then and bye for now.